Hey guys, welcome to another review. I am Mr. P, and today I'm reviewing something I'm actually quite excited about, uh, and I think quite a few people were and are still excited about this. Um, so what we've got today is the Magma Style Rebuildable Dripping Atomizer from Fast Tech. This is the 1-1 clone version, um, stainless steel. This is the more expensive of the two, so if you're looking for which one, get the more expensive of the two from what I understand and from having used this one. But anyway, that's what I'm doing today. So a bit of information about it. Obviously, it's a clone of the Magma from uh, Paradigm. So obviously excited about that um, because it's a great atomizer. So I paid £9.44 for this. It's not even a tenner. Anyway, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to chuck it down on the table, show you it really quickly, build it really quickly, come back up to me, have a nice little vape. Right guys, quick close up of the Magma um, RDA clone, obviously from Fast Tech. So, uh, quick look around it, nothing super special, little presentation box, C mark, recycling marks, uh, SKU code from Fast Tech. Pretty simple stuff, um, just a cheap box really. Uh, a bit of plastic that the Magma came in, obviously I've had it out already, but it's there. Um, Magma itself, and we've got a couple of pre-wrapped coils on silica, and a little bluey screwdriver that you get with bloody everything nowadays. Um, so, Magma, um, 22 mil across the base, fairly simple, 510 adjustable, very, very long. This thing, look at that. It's, it's it doesn't seem to be protruding that much, but the 510 itself is the longest 510 I have in any of my atomizers. Um, relevant markings, Magma, Paradigm, up there. Um, your, Flow control ring is about half a mil all the way around, so it kind of equates to 23 mil to the control ring and 22 mil to the deck. Uh, unscrew this. Um, obviously screwed in, not O-ring, so obviously I haven't got to worry about O-ring wear, um, which is cool. You will see that I'm being lazy and there's a micro coil already in there, purely because this is take two on this close up and I'm not coiling anything again when I've just put a brand new coil in it, because my camera's being a cock. Um, so, first of all, let's go into the uh, top cap. Um, 510 drip tip there. Everything I've tried fits, no problem whatsoever. A little bit of a sort of recess there. Um, and then you've got your sort of your divot or your, your router wells around the outside, and like I say, all your relevant laser etchings. Uh, dome shaped in there. I don't know if you can make out just how domed it is. Um, but, you know, flavor, flavor booster that is. Um, personally, I'd have made it smaller as possible and. Uh, cut it off, but that's me. Um, airflow control ring, very thick. If you're used to like the Zeniths um, and the clones that have been about, this is much, much thicker. Uh, nine air holes there. Now, obviously the originals stated, but I can't guarantee that this is the same and matching all that is a one one clone. I'm gonna guesstimate these air hole sizes. So I'm gonna say 0.8 to one, 1.5 to two, and I'd say that's a three mil hole there. Um, obviously nine of them, so you've got your opposing holes here and here, and then you've just got a single set here, so you can do single coils or dual coils. Obviously there, you can see all the way through for jewels, and there, it's just your single. Um, but, you know, fairly simple stuff. This has got a correct way to go on and an incorrect way, I'll show you that now. If you flip it upside down, now you're seeing half your air hole, whereas you flip that round, sticker on, there's your full air hole. So make sure she's on the right way, I was only getting about half of what you've got it set to. So top cap and airflow controlling just there. This is all stainless steel. Um, it does sound fast tech that minor parts may be made of non-SS. Obviously the insulation, possibly these screws. Um, not entirely sure. It does say these two pulse posts here, so there and there are 3.97 millimeter wide, screw type, wide, sorry, screw type, shoot and screw, um, screws, easier to rebuild and better conductivity. I don't disbelieve that. All I will say is that 3.97 millimeters, yes, but if you can see in there, not all the way down, okay, get skinnier down there, so fast tech. Um, and then you've got a massive, massive well here. All right, insulation there, uh, good for 40 drops, fast tech reckons. I'm not disputing that at all. Uh, and as you can see, and as I've already discussed, dual and single airflow goes in here, through, and then up. Okay, so we're going down and out. Um, it does sound fast tech, new technology. Um, 
Dire, uh, dual direct to cool air hole for maximum flavour and vapour. Well, I mean, the Smock Scar did have that uh, quite a fair while ago now, so new technology, not so much, but it's nice to see it. This, in my belief, you know, this basically air directly over that coil is by far and away the best way to get flavour from an atomizer, in my opinion. Um, so, I mean, that's that. Um, I've had no issues really with the insulation. People have said don't run these too low and too hot, they will melt. Uh, I've run this down to 0.3 ohms on the dual, no problem whatsoever. You can see the insulation. If I get right in, hopefully the camera will focus and the light will dip off a little bit. But right in there, that's as good as the day I got it. So there you go. Um, like I say, the 510, this is long. For some reason, it sits quite high up on my devices, but hey ho, you know, it still works and it's good. It's good. Um, to build her, to be honest, like I said, I did build this on camera, but I wasn't prepared to do it again when, as you can see, that coil is brand new. Um, basically, you know, your standard, your standard micro coil build, you've got to be a wee bit careful. Let me just bring you down. Actually, in fact, I'll stick this on the handle because I'm going to stick some cotton in it in a second, and I'll bring it down to have a little closer look. So I'll plonk that down there. Let's bring you in. Here we go. So you've got to be a wee bit careful um, with, if I show you there the coil placement here um, if you're slightly off a bit of the air hole at the back here can be showing uh, and that I found is not quite as good a vapor as if you have it directly over like it is excuse the state of the hand there it's disgraceful stuff um, and obviously when you've got two of them make sure they're both you know where they should be I like to bring mine down really close to the deck hopefully you can make that out just there uh, I've seen them run all the way up here so it goes all the way up here but I find that down here gives me a much better flavour. So, that's that. Um, really, all I've got to do now is chuck a bit of cotton in her, and we're gonna have a nice little vape and a chat about it. So, first things first, I've already made this wick, guys, because I'm cheating, like I say, I'm trying to play catch up here, and fat fingers do you no favours, so there we go. Pull it through, give it a little twist and pull, and uh, that's what we're after. So, fairly simple stuff, let's bring you out slightly. There we go. Um, and then just a simple sort of little snip down there. One, two. And then on this side as well, obviously, we've got two bits of wick. Now, I like to leave a semi generous amount of cotton just because I don't see any reason why you wouldn't. Um, and then what I've been doing is grabbing this here and going round, round the outside like so, giving it a little tuck down there. Now this is always easier when there's e-liquid involved in the situation. Um, like that. So that there is one and then obviously the same on the opposing side. So just give it a little flick around there and then pump it down. And obviously we're going to prime it. I'm using, what am I using today? A bit of Dunford's narwhal menthol situation going on here. So obviously um, with the magma I'm expecting good flavour I'm expecting a serious serious menthol hit so obviously you know standard procedure you guys just prime away really um, the advantage with this is you can be very very generous and just sort of get it in there and then what I've been doing is literally just plop 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 in the hole you know until about there really hopefully you can make all of that out but you know I've been more than generous there and I've still got room to in fact I'm going to give it another little squeeze and there we go. Now obviously a single air hole, so we get our airflow control ring. I like the big air hole. I mean, I'm a big fan of the big air hole. I do want to say as well, whilst I'm here um, doing this, is that this air hole, this three mil air hole, um, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I, I believe that's a three mil air hole, but I believe between the air coming in here and up here, there's a reduction because by the time it gets to me, it doesn't feel like I'm getting a three mil draw. It feels much more like I'm getting a two mil draw, maybe even slightly less if I'm honest, but that's a complete lie, about 2.2 mil. Um, but right guys, that was a very quick close up of the Paradigm Magma clone from Fast Tech. So back up to me now. I'm gonna have a nice little vape and a chat about it. Right guys, back up to me. Um, I'm just going to rehash a couple of bits for my own sanity because like I say, the video in the middle cut out yesterday and this was actually filmed yesterday, uh, the front of this video. So I want to rehash and recover um, just in case I'm about to do so. 
um, some information about it. So, very, very popular um, drip. I'm very sought after, I'm very spoken about the minutes. Obviously, had to get myself one and get a review done of it just to let you guys know whether it was worth having. Um, so, £9.94 at the minutes, less than a tenner for a 22mm dripper. Lovely. Um, so, fast tech. Uh, let's see what we've got. Um, it does say minor parts may be made of non-SS. Nothing has been confirmed to me, but typically that would mean, you know, um, a chrome-plated brass uh, centre pin, which makes no sense to me. Leave the centre pin brass, uh, just stainless steel coated at the top or silver coated at the top, um, and possibly um, chrome-plated brass screws. Um, they don't learn, do they? You know, we'll pay the extra 30p fast tech, no problem. Um, brushed, finished, core rebuildable, core replaceable. Um, no, and then connection thread is 510. We're kind of used to that at this stage. Some of the details 1 1 clone, like I say, this is the 1 1 clone, guys. It's the more expensive of the two, it's the one you're gonna want um, for the sake of a quid or two. Um, a stainless steel construction, spot on. Uh, two 3.9 millimeter wide poles, like I showed you in the, in the video, yeah, they are, but not at the bottom. I mean, for me, they're not. They're whatever it is at the bottom is how wide they are, two millimeter or whatever, and that's just an adaption or extension or attachment for that. Um, I want to get all the way down to claim that that's, that's how wide it is. It has to be the whole way down for me. Um, screw, uh, screw, shoot and screw um, type screws, easier to rebuild and better for conductivity. Uh, I don't know about better for conductivity, to be honest with you. I mean, if it's touching the poles, it's touching the poles, but you know, it may well be. I'm not the be all and end all, I don't know for sure. Um, new technology, uh, dual direct to core air hole for maximum flavor and vapor. Um, it's not new, fast tech, like not new. It's been done, DDA, and if you're looking for dual cores, uh, smock, scar, that's got it. Um, so it's not a new design, but that being said, it is the best design in my opinion. Sorry guys, it is the best design in my opinion because that air hole straight over that coil, underneath it, it is unbeaten in my opinion anyway. Um, nine air holes on the outer casing. Yes, there is three for each, three, uh, three air selector air holes for each option. So dual and single giving you nine, which is spot on. Extended juice basin can hold up uh, to 40 mil drops with minimal chance of leakage for a dripper. Um, yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I haven't really had this thing leak at all. I mean, I've really filled this and had no leaks. The juice well does hold a decent amount of juice. Um, it's, it really is spot on. Um, poles are welded to the base for durability. Well, yeah, I wouldn't, I mean, we'd hope so. Um, positive insulate hidden in the base to avoid melting. Not so much hidden as sunk into the base, and if something's going to get hot enough to melt, it's going to get hot enough to melt, whether it's in the base or in the top or wherever it is. Um, o ring less making it maintenance free. I mean, nothing's maintenance free, but definitely, you know, having, le having no o rings, um, it means you haven't got to look after them, which is, you know, exactly what you want to be doing or not doing in fact um, and then dome chamber cap for better flavor I would agree with that so there you go that's about all of the info uh, it is stated as 23 mil on the site and I did say in the close-up that airflow control is about half a move away but if you're wondering at the base 22 mil um, so yeah no, I mean that's what you want really um, but it does fit on 22 mil mods and 23 mil mods because it's got that kind of extension it doesn't look stupid on them uh, whereas most so in my opinion most 22 mil at ease would do um, because of that lip whereas this is kind of counteracted by that ring so positives for that chances are if you're american and watching this are like you're like what the fuck is he talking about because i'm rambling but it is what it is um so I'm going to delve straight into a five-point hit list, which is what I do. Six-point hit list, in fact, has become um, on this, and I'll cover everything across the way. Um, now, first on the hit list would be looks. Um, so, I mean... It's not bad looking at all. It's a bit tall, um, but that juice basin is going to account for that, you know, height. If you didn't have that juice basin, it'd be a much shorter dripper. Um, and obviously you've got the airflow going through that base as well. The, the laser engraving is done really well. The body looks pretty sweet. Um, I like things to be a bit more flush finish, for me anyway. Things like the Zenith, love the Zenith. Um, the Amiga, you know, love all these. But that doesn't mean that this isn't good looking, it's just not 
the best looking in my opinion. Um, so for looks, I'm going to give it a nine. I do think it's a good looking dripping out miser, and I think it goes well with you know my brush stainless steel 22 mil mods. So and my 23 mil chi. So spot on for that. Uh, next would be usability. Now, using a thing, it's not particularly difficult, and there are definite advantages to the way that this is designed. Um, putting a coil in it, the posts are quite wide. If you're using small coils, you know, or you're just using standard 3, 4 wrap, 0.2 um, around silica, for example, if that's what you like, um, you know, there is quite a gap between them, and you have got to learn to sort of stretch them coils out and then bring it in um, and make sure it's over that air hole where it should be. But it's no more difficult than many, many other dripping atomizers. Let's face it, it's a two post system. Um, your dual coils in there, you know, obviously you've got to go through um, the same posts, so bear that in mind, and that can be a bit more of a pain, um, especially when it comes to making sure they're like evenly and consistently. Now, if you're using micro coils, you've got a set amount of wraps around a set size bit, far easier, but then issues do crop up and it is slightly more difficult than a single. As I've stated in previous videos, I've done a video dedicated to it, I'm always a single over a dual core man, that's just my preference. Um, if your preference is dual, then you'll be used to that level of usability and maintenance. Um, it's got a massive juice well, it holds loads of juice, the top cap screws on, um, and I have noticed definitely leaking is near nothing on this, and you can, you know, a good mill into that, I would say, uh, and have a good half an hour's vaping on a lower res or 30 watts as this is, no problem whatsoever, it's great. Um, so for usability, I'm going to give it a 10 um, because it's been no issue whatsoever. Um, maintenance, now what have you got to do to maintain the thing? Obviously the standard stuff, keep your coil and your wick sorted. So if you're using jewels, that will be slightly you know, more maintenance. But again, if that's your preference, then you'll be used to that level of maintenance. Um, other than that, give it a little rinse, really. It's three pieces. Um, if you don't include the screws and they're all huge so you're not going to lose them down the sink it's a very livable atomizer now my concern with atomizers that have that big insulation is that I have had atomizers before that have tainted that that insulation is tainted because of the size of it with some particularly strong e-liquids not been a problem on this so far as I showed in the close-up it's like the day I've got it and I've run 0.3s but I have heard quite a few people saying I've melted my insulators. Um, I don't know what they're doing, but you know people are saying that it's happened. So just beware, guys. If you want to go seriously sub ohm, it's not made for that. It's not because the airflow is restrictive. Um, it may be two three mil holes, but it certainly doesn't feel like two three mil holes. Um, and you know for that reason, I wouldn't ever go below 0.5 on this. Um, I'm running 1.4 30 watts, and I'm happy. Uh, no problem whatsoever. Um, but maintenance, you know, there's very little maintain on it than that you wouldn't have to do on any other dripping atomizer you've got, so it's going to be a 10. Next would be build quality and price. Um, well, build quality first, I suppose. The screw threadings are no problem whatsoever, no burrs. Uh, the 510 is, is lovely, it slots in where it's supposed to. The airflow control ring is very well built. You know, the whole thing's very well built, it feels solid as hell. Um, so for build quality, it's going to get a 10. Price, the price on this is £9.44. pence. Um, that in dollars if you are interested or if you're in America. I know some of the guys who watch me are. Um, let me just check the price, current price in dollars for you. So the current price in United States dollars is £15.79. Um, for under a tenner for us in the UK, It's a ridiculous price, a 10 quid, um, 10 for price. What you're getting for your 10 quid, so build quality sort of weighed up against price, it's outstanding, it really is. You're getting a lot for your 10 pound. You would pay a lot more than 10 pound for this and be very happy that you've done so. So for, to get it for less than a tenner, yeah, it's, it's a 10 plus, you know, it's more than a 10 um, on build quality versus price. Uh, I'm just gonna have a little drip whilst I'm here. Um, next would be flavour and vapour. Now, we know this is a flavour monster. That's why we want it. If you're a flavour chaser, this is spot on. Obviously, the, the smaller air hole you've got, the more flavour and throat hit you tend to get. The bigger air hole, the slightly less flavour, but the more vapour you get. Um, flavour for me is a 10. It's outstanding. It really is. It can really bring out some of them notes that you don't get in other dripping atomizers. 
um, because of the design of the airflow. One of my favorite drippers, the, the A7 or the Zeus, it's that exact reason why I like that thing so much and that is because the airflow goes straight up bottom, through the bottom of the atomizer and up over the coil um, and I think that provides the best flavor bar none. So 10 for flavor. That's a single coil with one air hole exposed. Um, it's a 10 for vapor, easily, easily a 10 for vapor. This isn't a cloud chasing atomizer, but it does not mean you can't blow some. Um, this is a, a VG heavy juice, but it's not a pure VG juice. And I'm getting clouds that would be, you know, far more than some other dripping atomizers I've got of this kind. Um, the A7 being one of them, you know, which I would say is this is rivaling for flavor. This is you can get much more vapor out of this. You've got much more options, and it's much easier to build. Um, but also, let's face it, this is a hobby for us now. If you're looking at this, chances are. But if you want to compare it to smoking, you know, you'd never get. Any, I mean, you wouldn't even get that out of a cigarette. So to get that. It's a, a 10 for vapor. Um, overall, there are a couple of niggly bits. You know, the, the 510 is long. I mean, that's sitting right up on my Hannah. I don't know if you can make that out, but it is sitting right up on that Hannah. And to be honest with you, that center pin has been depressed to the point where certain 80s won't actually connect with it anymore because it's been depressed so much. For that to be sitting that high, it shows that that 510 connection is long. Um, it's going to be a combination of the 510 being slightly longer than it is and the fact that the um, positive contact extends out, sorry guys, extends out of the 510. Um, so, you know, that for me, on this, I'm not particularly bothered, um, but you may get certain mechs that haven't got the, the enough adjustment to compensate for that. The Fortune mod, for example, may struggle. Um, if you've got an adjustable mech and it sits flush, it wouldn't bother you. If you're one of them people that's not worried about things sitting flush, again, it wouldn't bother you, but that stuff does bother me. So it's just worth noting, not necessarily negative, but worth noting. Um, the drip tip wasn't included. I don't really care. They're a pound on fast tech, let's face it. Overall, the thing is a flavour beast. It performs great. It conducts well. It holds loads and loads and loads of juice. It's fairly easy to build. You've got dual and single coil options. You've got adjustable airflow. It's a no-brainer. This thing would be a 10 plus for 50 quid, for 60 quid, like the legitimate one is, or the genuine one, should I say. Um, this thing, for a tenner, is an absolute steal. I, I waited nine days for Fast Tech to deliver this, um, and yeah, absolute steal. So yeah, definitely worth uh, a go guys, and I'm recommending it hardcore. There is one last thing I wanted to point out from Fast Tech, and this is a reflection of manufacturer. Uh, Fast Tech is just a retailer. Um, but when I received this, there was actually two ordered, one for me, one for the partner. And we did the Fast Tech shuffle, you know, as you do when you come through, because you never know if it's gonna be, you know, exactly the same. So you always get, if you've got two of them, do a little shuffle and pick one. And on her one, there was only one screw included, so we've had to dip through and try and find another screw that fits this. Is it the end of the world? No, it's not, but it's not something that should be happening. Um, and if you only order one and you get one without, you know, one of the screws, um, seeing as the screws are claimed to help conductivity, well, instantly you're down on that, aren't you, if that's the case. Um, but more to the point, you've got a shuffle through and try and find something in your vaping arsenal that fits into it, and that's a, that's a, a pain in the ass. That's the only really bad thing I've got to say about it, and it's no reflection on the device itself, it's more the way it was received. Um, so yeah, recommend it guys, check it out, go over to Fast Tech, I'll link them down there for you just in case you haven't heard of them, um, and grab yourself one, it really is a properly good bargain. Um, other than that guys, thank you very much for watching, I have been Mr Proton, and I shall see you soon.